Joseph Martinez is on the ball during Atlanta United's 2-1 loss to FC Dallas at Mercedes-Benz Stadium on April 20, 2019. Carl L. More Atlanta United Atlanta United lost to FC Dallas 2-1 at Mercedes-Benz Stadium Saturday afternoon. The defeat leaves the five stripes with five points after six major league soccer games in 2019. Here are three takeaways. How can Joseph Martinez get involved? Martinez is the reigning MLS most valuable player. He scored 38 goals in the regular season and playoffs last year. Against FC Dallas, Martinez's first shot came in the 79th minute. That is not ideal for a team that is struggling to score goals. Part of the issue is Atlanta's strategy under Frank De Boer. In 2019, Martinez is asked to drop deeper into midfield and help create for his teammates. This plan has created good chances in recent games, but often, it is someone other than MLS's best goal scorer taking the shot. When asked last week whether providing an assist is as enjoyable as scoring a goal, Martinez jokingly said his teammates have to score for it to be an assist. There is truth in that comment. Martinez also faces opposing defenses that are wholly focused on stopping the Venezuelan from getting his chances. Dallas typically plays with two centre-backs, but against Atlanta, Luchi Gonzalez's team added a third. Martinez hardly had any room to run onto the end of through balls and crosses, thus rendering ineffective the focal point of Atlanta's sensational offensive displays in 2017 and 18. Deboe has to figure out one way or another how to get his best attacking player more involved. Little margin for defensive errors Dallas opening goal Saturday came after Leandro Gonzalo Pérez failed in an attempt to take the ball off of Michael Barrios with a sliding tackle near midfield. Barrios left Gonzalo Pérez on the turf and ran into the available space before playing a good pass to Jesus Ferreira for the assist. Atlanta played well in the first half, creating chances while limiting Dallas for the most part. But, one mistake left the five stripes with a deficit going into the locker room. In the moments after Atlanta's 1-1 draw against the Philadelphia Union last month, Captain Michael Parkhurst said the team needed to try to have some shutouts while the attack struggled. That still is the case. Atlanta played with three centre-backs for much of last season and didn't allow a goal from open play during the playoffs. The five stripes can play with two centre-backs and keep opponents at bay, they proved that in the first win of the season at the New England Revolution. However, it requires the team's central defenders to stay on an even keel and not take the risks allowed in a back three. How much of this is bad luck? In the opening stages of 2019, Atlanta's attack was anemic. The struggles could be chalked up to a lack of time in training to fully learn De Boer's tactics. That excuse is no longer valid, the five stripes did not play poorly against Dallas, taking 22 shots and putting eight on target. Atlanta finished with 14 key passes, passes that lead directly per shot to Dallas 4, 15 successful dribbles to Dallas 4 and 71% possession. That last stat was a result of both teams' game plans, the Boa wants to keep the ball, and Dallas was happy to sit deep and hit on the counter. For most of the contest, though, Atlanta looked like the better team. So, is Atlanta's place near the bottom of the standings really reflective of what De Boer's team can do this season? The five stripes are waiting for Gonzalo, Pity, Martinez to live up to his potential. Injuries have forced some significant players, Franco Escobar, Eric Remedy, Mikey Ambrose and George Bello, to miss time. Bad luck has been a factor in the results. It doesn't matter, though. Good teams overcome bad luck, and Atlanta needs to do that soon.
The realistic goal for this season is already slipping from winning the supporters' shield to making the playoffs. Anything less would be unfathomable. Comments Comments Let's blog ads. Why?